If you work with the circuit board, you might want to ground yourself first before working on it. Because you might have developed static and you can burn electrical components by accidentally discharging large charge through it. The wristband helps to ground the person. Also every time you get a shock in winter touching something metal, you can say thanks to Polo. Let us understand it with a simple experiment. If you try to rub the two balloons with your hair and take it closes, what will you observe? You observe that both the balloons repel each other. Now rub the first balloon with your hair and take it close to the second balloon. You observe that the first balloon attracts the second balloon. This is because of the static charge that develops on the surface of the balloon, which we already discussed in the first video. If you did not watch this video, click on the i button or I will give you link in the description box. In the first case, when we rubbed both the balloons with the hair and the negative charge developed on the surface of the balloons, this charge repelled each other. Simply we say that like charges repel each other and same as in the second case, unlike charges attract each other. This simple experiment explains the Coulomb's law. Back in the 18th century, it was well known that an electrical charge particle would exert a force on another charge particle. The problem was no one knew how strong the force was or what factor affected its strength. That is until a very bright scientist by the name of Charles Coulomb conducted several experiments that led him to propose what is now known as Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law stated that the electrical force between charge object is directly proportional to the product of the quantity of charge on the objects and inversely proportional to the scale of the separation distance between the two objects. In equation form, Coulomb's law can be stated as F is equal to K times Q1, Q2 over D square. The force between charged particle is directly related to the amount of charge carried by each particle. Aside from electrons, protons, most charged particle carry a variable amount of charge. Think of rubbing a balloon on your hair. The balloon will pick up negative charges from your hair and begin to act like one big charged particle. The amount of charge on balloon will depend on how long you rub it on your hair. Now if you repeat this experiment with the second balloon, the two will try to repel each other. Then the strength of that repelling force will depend on how much charge each balloon picked up from your hair. Going back to the Coulomb's equation, we can see that the amount of charge carried by each balloon are represented by terms Q1 and Q2. Where Q1 represents the quantity of charge on object first in Coulomb's and Q2 represents the quantity of charge on object second in Coulomb's and deep represent the separation of charges between the two objects, which we can measure in meters. The value of this constant is dependent upon the medium that charged objects are immersed in. In the case of air, the value is approximately 9.0 multiplied 10 to the power 9 Newton meter square per Coulomb scale. If the charged objects are represented in water, the value of K can be reduced by as much as the factor of 80. To allow us to focus on the relationship between the force and the charges, let's stripe away from the other parts of the equation. What this part of the equation tells us is that the force is directly related to the product of two charges. In other words, if the product of charges increases, then the force will also increase. To really understand what this means, let's try some examples. We'll start out with the equal amount of charges on each balloon which result in repelling forces between them. If we double the amount of charges on one of the balloons, then the product of the charges will also double. And in turn, the force will double. To demonstrate why it's the product of the charges that's important, as opposed to the individual charges. Let's go back to the beginning. This time we'll double the charges on one balloon, but cut the balloon charge in half on the other balloon. When we do the math, we can see that the product remains the same which means that the force will be unchanged. This is why it's never safe to assume that just because the charges on one particle changes, that the force will change as well. The force between charged particles is very dependent on the distance between them, even more so than on the particle charges we just discussed. In Coulomb's equation, the distance between the particles is represented by the term d. To allow us to focus on the relationship between the force and the distance, let's stripe away the other parts of the, our equation. We can see that the distance term is on the bottom of the fraction, which tells us that the force and the distance are inversely related. In other words, if the distance increases, then the force will decrease. 
or if the distance decreases then the force will increases let us do an example to understand it more two charges feel a repulsive force of 196 newton what is the force ratio r is quadrupled well coulomb's law scales as r square and r becomes larger by a factor of 4 the new force should be 1/4 squared or 1/16 of the old force so f is equal to 96 by 16 Now you understand the factors of Coulomb's law. Let us discuss the significance of Coulomb's law and why it is important to understand the Coulomb's law. The Coulomb's law equation provides an accurate description of the forces between the two objects whenever the object acts as point charges. A charged conducting sphere interacts with the other charged object as though all of its charge were located at its center. While the charge is uniformly spread across the surface of the sphere, The center of the charge can be considered to be center of the sphere. The sphere acts as a point charge with its excess charge located at its center. Since an object can be charged positively or negatively, these quantities are often expressed as positive or negative values. The sign on the charge is simply represented of whether the object has an excess of electron, a negative charge object or a shortage of electron, a positively charged object. it might be tempting to utilize the positive and negative signs in the calculation of force while the practice is not recommended there is certainly no harm in doing so i hope you understood the what is coulomb's law and variables affecting the force between the two charged particles and what is the significance of coulomb's law and why it's important to understand the coulomb's law if you really like this video hit the like button and comment in the comment box i will see you in the next video bye guys